Hello everybody, hope you're enjoying this Baltic series. I just wanted to start this video out showing this cool view from the balcony here. One of the cool things about sailing the Baltics is all the cool views and especially since we had this balcony, it's just cool. And look at this really cool castle that we saw along the way. Anyhow, um, let's move on to Lithuania. Lithuania is an interesting country. It's a post-Soviet country that was formed in the 1990s. And we're gonna go check it out. So come along for this adventure. Everybody and welcome to Kalapida, um, the major port town in Lithuania. And we're gonna take a little scenic route on a tour that I researched myself and we'll see how much, how well we do. Klapida is an important town. It was established in the, the year 1275 by some Germans who came and they came and built a castle, which in here, there's the castle. Basically, it's just a big mound now. Um, the castle was destroyed in the 1800s, but it, back then they called it the Mimmelberg Castle. And then now it's called the Klapida Castle, of course. Um, Lithuania was part of the Soviet Union back when we were in the Cold War and recently gained its independence in the 1990s. 1991. Yeah, 1991. And so we're just going to check it out. Um, most of the ethnic majority in this country is Polish, 80% is Polish. And then there is also um, a sizable Russian minority and Ukrainian minority in this country. So I thought we were going to do a walking tour of it Lithuania, but it turns out that my family didn't want to walk anymore. So we ended up getting a taxi for the day, hiring a driver, and he agreed for about 25 euros an hour to drive us anywhere we wanted. So we started to go on a little tour of Lithuania. Yes. Uh, how old is this town? This is uh, this town. It's our 770th anniversary. Yes. 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 Riverside's all like. Klaipeda runs on cash, but we didn't have any euros on us. So the first thing that we did is we had to go on a hunt to find an ATM machine where our bank would work. We're on the main street of Klaipeda. 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 In the Duini language. Yes. The Russians say Klaipeda. Klaipeda. Um, it's first book. Catechism, yes, religious book. Yeah, the religious first book. guy yeah, yeah. who wrote a book in Lithuania. His name is Martin. Martinas Majvidas. Martin Marsnas. Majvidas. Marsvidas. This is Lithuania. Yes. Uh, family. <laughs> Marsvidas. It took us a while to find an ATM machine that would work with our bank card, but luckily we have two bank cards that are international cards, and one of them went, did work. So we ended up using the cash that we took out, and we took the ferry over to what is known as the Coronian Spit. Here we go. We're loading up on the ferry here to get to the Coronian Spit right behind the cruise ship um, tour group. <laughs> it was 18, well, 19 year olds after taxes to take this little ferry across. On the Coronian Spit, it's all national park. In the hill, you look at the sea. Okay. Lots of pine trees. Just everywhere here is sand. Yeah. Sand dunes. Sand. Yeah, small bit. What the taxi driver was trying to explain there was that everywhere on the Cronian Spit is sand, but as I said, um, about hundreds of years ago, they 
seeded the sand and it actually grew into trees and grass so there's lots of trees and grass that keep the sand onto the island. There's also a lot of wind on the island and so you go up and there's these huge sand dunes that you can walk up to go to the beach. We just paid another 30 euros to go farther up onto the spit. And that's how much it goes. The roads on the spit are pretty well maintained, but there are some places where it does get pretty narrow. And the other issue that they've had with the spit are these birds that have come in. And these birds come in and they eat the trees and nest in the trees. And those trees are what's keeping the island together, so that's been an issue for them. We're coming into the village to see, Yuakrante, to see Witch's Hill, where the sculptures are, sand sculptures. You see authentic buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of German buildings here. Old German building. Nice promenade with a lot of sculptures. Oh look, paddle boats, Denise. Somewhere on this trip we've got to find you a paddle boat, right? Yep. The area was first settled by Germans, so it's not surprising to see yeah, a lot of German architecture so on the little villages a, on the uh, Kronos Yes. Yeah. Uh, not music, not mm. loud here. Just, it's, uh, it's peaceful. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you on the other side. Yeah. Okay, we're walking up. Witch's Hill, which is the artwork of Jonas Stanius in the 80s. Witch's Hill is a free two mile loop where you'll see some very interesting wooden sculptures. It does require some climbing, but it's a very interesting place to visit. It took one guy two years to carve all these sculptures yeah. and he was really into Lithuanian folklore and you can see the that story here. story of the Kronian Spit is that there was two gods that fought each other. One was the god of the waves and one was the god of land. And the goddess of land who was uh, the god of waves was trying to crush Klapida, Klaipeda. And so the god of the sand put her sand inside her apron and put it here on the Kronin's bit to protect Klaipeda. <laughs> downhill. Nice dragon though. Looks like the soldiers protecting the maiden in the tower. Go! Hurry! I'm trying to beat this group. Okay. We have good restaurants, good food. Mm -hmm. Can be bicycle made mm -hmm. around the sort of rent bicycles mm -hmm. with sheep if you want. In the smaller villages of Lithuania, you'll often see these banners posted, these wooden banners, um, signify with the different buildings painted what kind of services are offered in that village for example in this one there's a store and a hotel and a post office so that's what these windmills um these windmill wooden banners are about later uh, under yeah. trees yeah yeah this is made under trees dead it's yeah. not no plants new yeah 
Jeez. In this section right here, our taxi cab driver was saying, you can see where the trees are being taken down by the coomerant birds who have nested in this area. And so the trees are dying in this area. Burns still a lot of uh, fish mm -hmm. from uh, fisherman. At this point, we were getting really close to the Russian border, and so it was only about five kilometers away. We're on the border right now, Nida. Here, straight is beach. Okay. If we walk here to beach. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about three kilometers. Uh, yeah. Nida beach. Yeah. It's people from uh, yeah. town from Nida coming yeah. here. It's about okay. one kilometer, two kilometers ah, maybe. Very good. We've reached the inspit, or at least the end for us, because over there where the tree line ends, that is Russia over there. Well, Kaliningrad Oblast, which is the tiny... Oblast. Yeah. Over here we have the sundial of Needle. The Nida sundial. From here you see Nida later. Okay. From this corner. Okay. The farthest point we can go in Lithuania without going into Russia. The Russians cut down all the trees between Lithuania and Russia so that they could observe um, the area in between there. This little wooden fence is actually all that there is between the border between Russia and Lithuania. It's not much. You can step over it, but I wouldn't dare do that if I were you. It reminds me a lot of the... Mexico Guatemala border, except there's more soldiers. You walk up a little pathway, there's a gift shop, but there's really no interference on the border. The Coronian Spit in general is an interesting place because obviously over there in the Kaliningrad border area, there's a lot of military buildup, but for the most part, it's just a sunny seaside place that locals go to hang out and hang out at the beach and stuff so it's calm but yet built up at the same time so that was interesting mm -hmm. there's a rule on the coronian spit that you can't build any new buildings you can only restore old ones so the architecture gets remain remains there and there's beautiful flowers everywhere especially in the summertime the houses cost. Place, yeah. The houses cost a lot of money. No, this is this house cost. Luckily for us, they only charge us to go out, not to come back in, so it's only one-way charge. Taking the ferry back into Klaipeda, of course you can see all the shipping boats, and Klaipeda being a deep harbor is of course an important economic resource to Lithuania because it's the only deep water port for all of Lithuania. Back on Main Street in Klaipeda. We're going to make a quick pass by the square and then we got to go back to the ship. Coming in Old Town, yeah? Here is marked Bazaar here. Yeah, Bazaar here. Uh, it's 
Mr. Everywhere Cobblestone. Mm -hmm. I'm straight, don't can drive. Yeah. <laughs> I must go slow. This hill. It surrounds the water. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you have bunker. Bunker. Bunker, yeah. Okay. Old bunker. Old bunker. Oh. You see first this. Uh, European village, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Hollywood set, except for this easy lounge. Mm -hmm. You put your back to the easy lounge and ignore the easy lounge. Sure. This is town square for Leipzig, Lithuania. It was in this place in 1939 that Hitler gave a speech where he claimed a bloodless victory. It was his last bloodless yeah. victory in I understand. Europe. Well, in America, any statues in Leipzig. This is the first statue you'll probably see from the boat. It's called The Child's Dream. He dreams of being a sailor out on the open sea and he's greeting everybody that comes to port here. And so there's the ship. Well, we are back to port now. I hope you enjoyed this adventure here in Kalaipira and out to the Korean Spit. And so we had quite an adventure out there. Thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one when we go and visit more of the Baltic states.